Donald Trump had his Madison Square Garden rally yesterday, folks. And the regular Menorcans, the regular crumb grinders were all there. You had Giuliani. I'm surprised Mike Lindell wasn't there. But in place of Mike Lindell, they actually had Dr. Phil, who I think is on the same track. And that's who I want to talk about today. He said something today, folks, that it, it just typifies what I've seen with MAGA. And I just want to highlight what I saw. But before we get there, folks, I just have to talk about this. So Donald Trump just, this is moments ago. Where is he? He's uh, evidently in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. And he's had a lot of these senile moments, but he had one just 10 minutes ago that just just hit him and he lost his train of thought. I don't, I don't even know how the rest of the rally went, but here's how it here's how it got him off track. But we're close to World War II mm, because World we War have II. people in the White House that World War Three. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had World War II. He doesn't know where he's at. I had World War II. I had World War II veterans. I didn't realize the word veteran afterwards. Thank you very much. Oh, boy. Folks, those, those senior moments are coming at him fast and furious. So this whole rally, by way of describing kind of just just the low lights before we talk about Dr. Phil. They had this comedian that was there and I guess they didn't vet what this guy was going to say or they didn't care. I mean, I can't figure these people out anymore. The guy gets up there and he just starts talking all sorts of smack. This is part of it. Have a listen to this. I welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms. And by open arms, I mean like this. <laughs> yeah, like, no, go away. Yeah, we get it. Big ha ha. It's wild. And these Latinos, they love making babies too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no pulling out. You know, it's not the Latinos making babies that worry me. It's people like him that are making babies, folks. <laughs> Jesus. I tell you, it, it, uh, it's just a tailspin from hell here into hell. So they can't give up, you know, on Hillary. I, I don't get this obsession with Hillary, but these people live, breathe, and die to say something nasty multiple times a day about Hillary. I, I personally don't get it. They talk, I've seen uh, people say that, oh, you know, Frank, <laughs> geez, he's got Trump derangement syndrome. Watch out for that. These people have got Hillary Clinton derangement syndrome, and they don't, it, it's far worse than any Trump derangement syndrome that they might think I have. And it goes like this. She is some sick bastard, that Hillary Clinton, huh? What a sick son of a bitch. The whole fucking party of... Okay, that's enough. I mean, you can see what I mean. He's got this group of 20,000 people here, and he's taken that moment to talk about what? Hillary Clinton? And then you had uh, Trump's lawyer. I think her name is Alina Haba. Something like that. There she is coming out. Why is she there? <laughs> Why is she there? Nobody knows, folks. Nobody knows. I, uh, who put this together? And here she is actually talking. Have a listen to this. You see, I put my MAGA jacket to trigger Hillary Clinton. 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 I mean, who talks like that? Right? I mean, it's Clinton. It's not hard to pronounce. But there's another one. Hillary Clinton derangement syndrome. It's, it's evidently a real thing here, folks. And then, of course, we have this moment that everybody's heard where that comedian, the same one from the first clip, is talking about Puerto Rico. A lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Thump. Yeah, that's real funny. And folks, it went on. You had Grant Cardone there. You had Rudy Giuliani. Rudy is still, you know, he, he thinks everybody's trying to kill him, trying to kill Trump. I mean, I, I don't know. And then he had this Howard Dean moment. Remember that Howard Dean battle cry that he did that everybody says ended his career? I mean, I don't know how a battle cry could do that. But anyway, here's Rudy Giuliani at the end of his speech. Now go do it! Fight! 
rumor has it he's still asleep, folks, and he's he's just waiting to have his first cup of Rudy Giuliani coffee that he's trying to sell to everyone out there that's MAGA. So it went on like that. I mean, you who would watch this? Uh, sick people like me, I guess. But Dr. Phil is the one I want to talk about. So then he came out, folks, and he had this to say. He was rambling on about DEI. Have a listen. Not on DEI. This country was built on hard work, and it needs to continue to be built on hard work. So the problem that I've got with that is they, they all talk about DEI, right? Now you've got Dr. Phil of all people coming out talking about it. And the thing of it is, you know, if you've got your own business and you go out and you can make it and you don't have to worry about generally people around you, but when you're in a corporate setting, DEI is important because they're the ones that have got their foot on their heads. And I'm talking about the black people, the Latinos, the transgender, you know, the LGBT. And then he went on about this and he said, you guys aren't dumb. Have a listen to this. This came in at about seven minutes and 21 seconds. And he had this to say. Because we want people to think for themselves. You guys aren't dumb. You don't need to be told what to think. You just need the facts. And you're here because you have the facts, right? Do you think? You're here because you recognize when legacy media edits answers and gives you what they want you to hear. And so-, so he just enabled a whole permission structure around the lies of Donald Trump that has this, this has been the core problem as I see it with MAGA is you've got this whole ecosystem, this whole permission structure, it's Republican senators, it's Republican congressmen, it's this network that he said this on, you know, it's Fox news. They all provide the structure of permission around Donald Trump that what he's saying is true, right? The things that he says, the January 6th insurrectionists are hostages. They're eating cats. They're eating your pets in Springfield, Ohio. I mean, weird stuff. And you know what I mean? It goes on and it goes on, but it's people like this that are saying, you know what the facts are. Not a bit of pushback. And he's given them the enabling structure to say, you can believe folks, you can believe in all of these lies, you know, which is what Donald Trump is about. So this is the problem. It's people like Dr. Phil that just encourage the enabling structure. And he's doing this because he's got his own network or something coming up here, folks. And he went on to talk this, this way. This is coming in at eight minutes and 21 seconds. Have a listen. Tomorrow morning when people find out I came here to talk to you. You say this in Hollywood, and all of a sudden you ain't got a job. Problem is, I don't need one. Why? I don't need a job because I got you. So what he's telling you there is that he's got all of these MAGA people, the millions of MAGA people, with whatever network little folly that he's put together, he's going to be grifting through the MAGA people, asking them for their support, essentially. So, yeah, Dr. Phil, I don't know. I I, I can't say that I actually had a ton of respect for the guy. Um, but I have even less now because he's, he's just an enabler of the, the lies of Donald Trump. And he's putting that, he's adding to the permission structure around all of those lies, folks. And this This is the problem that we have in America. They wouldn't be, he's calling them facts. We know them as lies. If they referred to them as for what they were, that they're lies, they're, they're not facts. We wouldn't have the situation that we have right now with millions of Americans that, that say crazy stuff because they hear crazy stuff. Um, So Dr. Phil, I don't know. You, you just took a huge, huge demotion right here. And this is a, put you on a whole different career path, brother. And I'm not so sure it's a good one. 
Till next time, folks.